between way to serve. Who are you choosing today? Are you choosing your husband? Or you are choosing your wife? Or you are choosing to serve material things? Are you choosing to serve the gods of your father? And God said, it is time for the gathering. It is time for the Israelite to come and serve me. Drop everything. Drop your works. Drop everything. Come to me and serve me. Because God wants them to come back totally to the former days where the world has not yet civilized. God is calling the world coming back to the former days where the world has not yet civilized. Former days. So how calm is it going to be? How will you make it? This is the topic I'm telling you and what God told me. And today I said, Lord, what should I ask the people? He said, tell them to choose who to serve. I want you to ask you are looking at me. Make it perfect, perfect, silent in your heart and choose one person. Is it your makeup that you are choosing over God? Because your makeup has become a addicted God unto you. Is it your year ring? Is it your wedding ring? Is it your wedding ring? Is it your change wristwatch? Chain wristwatch. Whatsoever is a God in your life, choose between you and God. Is it your phone? Answered. Android phone. Internet phone. That is your goal. The Lord said, choose one. The Lord said what? Choose one. Who are you choosing to serve as your God? God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. We appreciate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for giving us the grace and the privilege to stand today and to be alive. I want us to pray as we start the message. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancient of days, the beginning and the ends, the Lord that never fails, the mighty man in battle, the I am that I am. The only one of Israel. We want to appreciate your holy name because you are God. We want to thank you because you have never failed and you will never fail. Be glorified and be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we want to appreciate you for being faithful to us. Be that glorified and exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord, we want to hear your word today. We ask the Holy Spirit to take perfect control. Take preeminent control in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We bind the devils and the evil spirit around in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want us to quickly go into the word of God. And then we will choose our topic. Go into Joshua, open your Bible to Joshua chapter 24. Choose between who to serve. Choose between who to serve. Please, wherever you are and you are hearing me, I want you to concentrate in the message you want to hear today. Don't allow anything to distract your attention. Choose between who to serve. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. And I read, And if it seems even unto you to serve the Lord, choose you these days, who you shall serve. 
whether the gods which your father serve that were on the other side of the floor, or the gods of the Amalek, Amalek, in whose land ye dwell it. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Choose between way to serve. Who are you choosing to be? Are you choosing your husband? Or you are choosing your wife? Who are you choosing now? Are you choosing to serve money? Or you are choosing to serve material things? Are you choosing to serve the gods of your father? The gods of your father. Who are the gods of your father that Joshua is talking about here? The gods that the Israelites serve in Egypt, Egypt country. The god of snakes. Choose who to serve today. Who are you choosing? I want you to know that it's that you choose. Or the truth for you. It's either you choose or the choose for you. I know in your heart what you are saying is that I choose the Lord, but are you actually choosing Him? The question I want to ask you is that are you actually choosing Him? If you are choosing Him, you will do His way. If you are choosing him, you will follow him. Wherever he asks you to go, you will go. Wherever he asks you to enter, you will enter. If he said, leave this country, you leave the country. If he said, leave that job, you leave that job. Who are you choosing? Let me know. I'm asking you a question. And it's a simple question. Who are you choosing? Many of you choose money. That is why you love your work so much. That for no reasons, you cannot leave your work to serve God. You love, you love your job so much that for no reasons, you don't know who can tell you that. Because the only way you are surviving to you is the job. Is the job that is making you to survive. And to you, nobody on earth can dictate whether you can you should leave the job or not because that job is your goals you are not willing to leave that straight land because that land is your goals the reason why you travel to abroad is not to see their good roads but you want to become something in life and god said it is time for the gathering it is time for the israelite to come and serve me drop everything Drop your walls. Drop everything. Come to me. That's all. But in your heart, your heart is finished. Your question is that I did know Christians who are serving God and they are seeing this strange land, strange forest, strange cities, and they are still serving God. True to their heart, but is their service acceptable? Are they going to make it to heaven? I was talking in the radio station yesterday when the presenter was asking me a question. He asked me and said, Man of God, can you tell me why the church has to go back to the Bible? And I told him, I said, because they are going to hell every day. No Christian now is making it to heaven again. I want to let you know, I was telling somebody, I said, do you actually know that in 10 years to this time, we might not see anyone that will make it to heaven again? We might not, not even one. Because the Bible said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffering violence, and the violence take it by force. 
the rules and the instruction, the standard of God was actually not like this before. It was not as serious as this before. But from the starting days of John the Baptist, it become more other and more other and more other and more other and more other that is getting harder for Christians to make it to heaven. Now I asked the I asked people, I said, Are you aware that more rules and law of what God is is coming out every day? Because God wants them to come back totally to the former days where the world has been yet civilized. God is calling the world coming back to the former days where the world has not yet civilized. Former days. So how call is it going to be? How will you make it? That's the question. Every day we are getting rules and rules. One of the rules that I'm here to fulfill that God said to me, He said, I do want you people to be wearing something that fitted you. To wear something bigger than you. You have to look not attractive to the people of the world. You have to look more up. You, you must look not appealing. Not appealing. Not to sit. To the As a man and woman. It's not only woman now. You know woman we are saying that women have to wear something, something because of temptation. Now God is saying even man have to do the same thing. Another rules. He said because that is how they wear it in the day. And he pleased with it. He's pleased with it. See, all this tie tie clothes of suit and you are wearing now, still fitting our body now. He said, he is from Marie. So I went to Taylor and I brought my clothes there and just to collect it. And I told it, I said, Taylor, please help me to sew clothes that will be bigger than me. He said, ah, sir, I'm quite possible. I said, thanks, see the of me. They were laughing. He said, how possible in this time? I said, yes, in this time. In the olden days, there is a difference between a child of God and a child of the devil. Because they are no when SU, they, they call it scriptural union that time. When scriptural union people are passing in the road, there's a way they recognize them as a scriptural union. The way the clothes they wear are totally different. The way they talk are totally different. The way they walk are in those days, you will see bad Christians with their Bible. At these days, man, you will see Christians by their back. Even though they are going to carry Bible, it's going to be inside their back, not in their hand again. Because the Bible has become too heavy for them in the hand. Now. The Christian of nowadays now, they can't carry their Bible around again because that Bible has become too heavy for them in their hand. And you want to make it to heaven. They now put the Bible inside their in the olden days. No matter how big the Bible is, you will see Christians with their Bible walking on the street with their Bible, not filing. They are not carrying file. They are not carrying bag. They are carrying Bible. Even though they are carrying Bible, they would still put the Bible on the, in, the, in their chest like this, going everywhere. When you greet a Christian brother, they will not just greet you and say good morning. They say bless you. The gentle voice that come out is not like asking voice of our Christian now, our brother and our sisters. Our Christian of the olden days, they don't use a law in the olden days. They say, cover it with you. Bless you. Shalom. Peace be unto you. These are the language that came out from the mouth of the Christians of those days. But now it has changed. It has changed. And God said, I am not willing and I'm not wishing you. I don't want the life you Christian are making. I don't know people are saying that what is this my preaching now? I know different things might come out by saying that what is this my preaching now? Is it compulsory? Is God looking at that one too? But I want to tell you, this is what the Lord is saying. He said, He's not willing, He's not willing to see any of your the, the civilization matter that is going on now. God is not willing to see it now. He wants to go back. He don't care what people are calling you that you're a Okago man, Okago sister. He don't, he's, he's not caring. He's not, he didn't, he don't care about that. He's not interested in your nowadays lifestyle. If you are living your life like that, you are going to hell. And this is the topic I'm telling you and what God told me. And today I said, Lord, what should I ask the people? He said, tell them to choose. 
who to serve. I want you to, as you are looking at me, make it perfect, perfect, silent in your heart and choose one person. Is it your makeup that you are choosing over God? Because your makeup has become an addicted God unto you. Is it your year ring? Is it your wedding ring? Is it your wedding ring? Is it your change wristwatch? Chain wristwatch. Whatsoever is the God in your life, choose between you and God. Is it your phone? Answer. Android phone. Internet phone. That is your God. The Lord said, choose one. The Lord said, what? Choose one. Who are you choosing to serve as your God? I want you to raise up your hands now and say, I'm choosing one person. Choose one. Is it the country you are now? I see how many times we God tells you that you should leave that country. How many times has God shouted into your ear that leave that country? What are you doing there? What are you doing there? You are there because of the riches and the meek and honey that was flowing there. My dear brother and sister, if God comes now or you die out of disobedience, don't just pray that anything happen to you. If you die in that strange land, you are going nowhere. Hellfire straight. Because the Lord will judge you accordingly to the understanding of his words upon you. I have preached to you, you have heard it to your ear. And do you know what? Since when Jesus Christ came to me physically and appeared to me, and he told me, he asked me a question. I know he told me something. He said, I didn't ask you to tell to force people to obey me. I only asked you to tell them. He said, Daddy, I fear God. He said, I didn't ask you to force them to obey me. I only asked you to tell them. That's all. He said, Because I will judge people according to what they hear, not according to what they believe or according to what they accepted. That is why if somebody says this thing is a sin, I will first step back. I will not ask God, Lord, is this thing true to a sin? Because God will not judge you basically on your belief. Hey, Apostle is trying to force us to come to, to, the, to the, the Africa. Listen to me. I am not forcing you. I am telling you what God is saying. It's no more in news now that the wrath of God is, fall, is going to fall on the white countries. And it's going to be a Babylon. It's even in the prophecy of revelations that the Babylon will be born, that the machines will be crying and be weeping. Those who wish to go there and go and live life there, they will be crying that, ah, so this is what has happened to London and America. They will be born into hatches. This is God's own words, and it cannot be changed. And those who are living there too will be born together. Lord wife was. Talk, talk, Lord, wife, turn to, to, to salt because he loved the things of the world. And God make her to turn to salt. There's one thing I want it to be so clear to you and so glaring to you is that the Lord will not force you to obey him. He will never do that to you. God will never do that to you. Forcing you to obey him, no, it's out of it. God will never force you to obey him for any reasons. For any reason will he force you to obey him. But well, there's one thing I want to tell. I want to tell you. Choose between one thing. The husband you carry so much that you love so much that is the one controlling your life is good. The Bible says submit to your husband. It is the word of God. But you have to be thinking twice. Think twice. If your husband is coming against the Lord and you are now obeying your husband, coming against the Lord, it means you have chosen your husband over God and that will take you to hell. Choose between who to serve. Choose between who to serve. Choose between who to serve. Because in the kingdom of God, there's no excuse. If you die now with that kind of sin in your heart, if you die now with the way you are living now, where are you going to land it? In? I can tell you and I assure you that your ending will be so serious. May the Lord bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the message the Lord has asked me to tell you. Choose who to serve. 
if I'm telling you choose between who to serve, I'm telling you what God told me this morning. I asked him, Lord, what should I tell your people? He tell, he tell me, he said, tell them to choose who to serve. Your property is so much important to you for you to go and worship God. Gather the Israelite. You hear it with your ear. Gather the Israelite. You know it and you still say no. You say you are thinking about it. You want God to voice to you. Which kind of voice will he voice to you? After you have heard it. After you are solely in the dream. There is a guardian of the Israelite. Those who have surrendered everything. They have left the world. They have left everything in the world to serve God with their genuity. What do you think that matters to God? That make God to say Israelites will come and serve him. This serving of gathering has been from the Genesis. It's not today the start. Genesis from the beginning. He said, said, let my people go to come and serve me. Because God so much cherish the gathering of his children. The reason why you are born in this world the real genesis of why everyone is born into this world is not for you to get married, to have job, to have car, to have houses. It's for you to come and worship God. And now God is calling you to worship Him. You say, I can worship God where they are worshiping God daily. Where they are worshiping God once in a while, twice in a while. Why I can continue with my daily lives? Well, if I should tell you that that will not be possible, He's calling you now. May the Lord bless you. Please feel free to subscribe to the channels. Send this message to everyone. Let everyone receive the same, same message so that they can be saved. I pray that you will not go to hell. I pray that the things of the world will not drag you to hell. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. God be with you. Shalom.